Greetings friends, Survival Doc here. This video is about what not to wear as a new survivalist. Now when the crap hits the fan, I know some of you are going to go grab your fatigues, grab all your camo, your tactical vests, you're going to put all your equipment on, and you're going to run out the front door, and you're going to get shot. You do not want to stand out in a worst case scenario. You want to blend in with the crowd. I do not recommend all this camo stuff. What about this hat? National Rifle Association. You know what this hat says to the police and to the military? It says, that guy's got a gun. It's the same with camo. They're going to say, that guy is packing. I don't want the police to know that I've got a concealed weapon. Even though my gun is legal, during an emergency, the police and the military are trained to disarm citizens, even honest, law-abiding citizens. Learn a lesson from Katrina. Uh, after Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans, the military went in. They went right to the well-to-do neighborhoods where the people had arms. These people were law-abiding citizens. They had arms simply for the reason to protect their homes, like the Second Amendment allows all Americans to do. And yet these military people were ordered to go in, forcibly take all the weapons from these people, and they left them defenseless against the looters. Now, in this video, I am not knocking the military. I don't want you to get the idea that I am anti-police or anti-military. My son is career military. He's currently active duty. I support the military. But at the same time, I realize how the police and the military can be corrupted and how they can be used by an illegitimate government or a corrupt government. This has not been reported by the media, but I have heard from people who were there that in the aftermath of Katrina, approximately 50% by some estimations of the soldiers who were ordered to confiscate guns refused to do so because they knew that those Americans were law-abiding Americans and they knew that the Second Amendment gave those people the right. However, what that means if 50% refused is it also means that 50% went along with it. All right, there are a lot of people who are just follow orders regardless of whether they are constitutional or not. And in cases like that, it may help, it may get you shot, but it may help to remind these people about this right here, and this might be uh, an effective weapon. I'm not saying it's the only weapon you should have with you, but this might actually turn out to be your most effective weapon. This is the Constitution of the United States. I wouldn't hesitate to turn it to the Bill of Rights and read to the military person if I'm given a chance. Amendment number four, the Bill of Rights. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describe, describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. I'd also point out the Second Amendment, which they are well aware of. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The military people do not have to follow orders that are illegal. Even if their commanding officers give them the order, they, if, they, if they know the order is illegal, they do not have to follow it. I also re remind people in the military periodically about the oath that they took. There was a young, uh, young man, a nephew of mine and my family, who had just come back from uh, joining the um, branch of the military. He had just come back from boot camp. And I talked to him about this. And I said, do you remember swearing an oath? Um, and he said, yes, I do. And I said, do you remember who you swore allegiance to in that oath? Well, he thought for a minute. Now, at, at the time he swore this oath, I'm sure there were a lot of things going on. He, he was new to the military. He was being bombarded with a lot of information. And he couldn't think of, of actually who he swore an oath to. And then he guessed by saying, I think the president. 
And I said, no, you did not swear an oath to the president. This is, what, this is your oath, and this oath is used by all branches of the military. And a similar oath is used uh, by most police departments and by most politicians, uh, including the president and Congress. I, state your name, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So our military people, and if there are any military people out here, out there watching this, I remind you of this, and I'm sure most of you do not need reminded of this, especially the people who are watching my videos, I'm sure you don't need to be reminded of this. But I'll say it anyway for the people who are not aware of this. Our military takes an oath, and our policemen do the same thing, take, a, take an oath not to their commanding officers, not to the president, but take, they take an oath to the Constitution of the United States. In this country, the individuals are the sovereigns. Continuing with the oath, semicolon, that I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance to the same, semicolon, and that I will obey the orders of the president of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me, comma, according to regulations and, and the uniform code of military justice. So help me God. All right, notice that first of all, the first thing they swear to is they swear allegiance to support and defend the Constitution. There are no conditions on that part of the oath. All right, secondarily, that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me. And there is a condition to that part of the oath, comma, according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. And if you will check that Uniform Code of Military Justice, you will find out that the soldiers do not have to follow orders from the commanding officer or even from the president if those orders are illegal according to the laws of this land. And what is the law of this land? This right here. The Constitution. So in a worst case scenario, when the crap hits the fan, it may help to remind the people who are, who are given orders to violate this. It may help to remind them about their oath. Now, some of them it probably won't help. Some of them will probably just shoot you just for reminding them. But for others, there are a lot of good people, and I believe in our military, and I believe in our police officers, and I know that there are a lot of good people in the military and in our, in our police. Now, the problem, of co uh, another problem, of course, is not only military people who will follow orders over their oath, but also the fact that they have been bringing foreign troops into this country and training the foreign troops to take actions against Americans. Yes, there have been cases reported in the news of foreign troops coming, being brought over here by the United Nations and what are they training to do? They are training to go door to door and confiscate guns of Americans. Well the thing about foreign troops is they do not take an oath to the Constitution of the United States. And not only that, but there are a lot of people out there who hate us and they hate us uh, for different reasons. One reason they hate us is because we have a lot. They're, they're envious of Americans because we historically have been so rich. Another reason they hate us is because our corrupt government has used our military to go over there and conquer people and occupy nations and to kill people and commit undeclared wars that are unconstitutional and illegal. And our government has created a lot of enemies over there. And a lot of those people over there will be all too happy to come over here and subdue and shoot Americans. So when the crap hits the fan, if we, if we have to turn against our military, we don't have a chance. Our military is the largest, the strongest, the best equipped military in the history of the world. We won't have a chance. Our chance will be if our military is on our side. And it may turn out to be a case where our military is fighting the United Nations military. I don't know. I'm just saying that's a possible scenario. But regardless, our Constitution is our greatest weapon as a people. Now getting back to what not to wear, if you're some young 18 or 19 year old military eager beaver and you see a guy wearing clothes like this, if there's a, a group of people moving through a checkpoint, and if you see a guy with clothes like this, what are you going to do? You're going to search him and you're going to de-arm him. 
You, you do not want to wear a hat that says National Rifle Association. You do not want to be wearing camo clothes. You certainly do not want to be wearing a tactical vest, especially when they see people with these vests. They have a holster right here, and they're wearing their gun right here. What are you thinking? You want to blend in with the crowd. You want to wear normal civilian clothes. If you're a United Nations troop or an American troop, and you're watching people go through a checkpoint and you see someone dressed like this, what are you going to think as compared to someone dressed like this? And on the subject of your bug out bag, in my video on bug out bags where I showed you the contents of my bug out bag, I got a lot of flack from my viewers about the bright orange color of my bug out bag. Well, the reason I got bright orange is because when I bought this bag, I bought it for a two month hitchhiking tour across Europe and traveling down the highway, I didn't want to get hit by a car or a truck. So I got bright orange for a reason. Now, I would rather have bright orange than um, camo. Here's my wife's bag, yellow. We don't want to get hit by a car or a truck. But I've decided that bright orange and yellow, even though they're better than camo, it still might not be the best choice in some situations. Here's another option. This is one of my smaller uh, bug out bags. I like this bag, it has a nice leather bottom, it's a good quality bag. Of course, there is one problem with this bag. This is not designed to be a military style bag, but it is olive green and it does have a little bit of a military look about it. I prefer not to have this color bag. I believe the ideal color is black. Black will blend in. It's a very very common color. It's a most common color for suitcases and, and packs of all sorts and also, black does not stick out. It, it's, e it's easier to hide at night, of course. And if you're in the woods, black does not stick out. Of course, there may be times when you're in the woods where you want bright orange. If you're traveling through the woods during hunting season, I would not recommend black. I'd recommend bright orange. Also, if you get lost in the woods and people are trying to find you, for helicopters flying over, uh, orange bags going to be a lot easier to spot than a black one. But these are things that you just need to consider. Here's one of my favorite bags. This is a photographer's bag. And what I like about this bag is it says right there, photo. So at a quick glance, it lets people know exactly what's in this bag. This is my camera equipment, right? High capacity magazines. Of course, they still might search my bag and they might find my equipment, but I think this is still preferable than carrying your equipment around in a tactical vest, especially camo tactical vest. This is my range bag. This is what I carry to the shooting range. So I put my pistols in here, my ammo, my gun cleaning equipment. It's just a uh, unassuming black bag. It is actually a, um, it's a type of briefcase bag. Well, when I go to the range, of course, I'm not really concerned about the type of bag that I have, but if I ever grab this, because it has ammo in it, it has my pistols in it, if I ever grab this or I need this to carry some of my weapons with, uh, I'd much rather be carrying this bag than an ammo bag. These are just some things that I'd like for you to think about especially all you people out there who think camo is the way to go. Now, I, there are certainly situations where camo would come in handy. I have a lot of camo because I am a hunter. And if we ever have to hit the woods and hide out, camo might come in handy in that situation. But let's face it, if we get to that situation, we are up a creek. We're hoping that it does not ever get so bad where we actually have to hit the woods. But 
Ordinarily, after disaster though, in most situations, if you, hate, if you need to bug out of your house or you need to carry some um, warm clothing or you need to carry some equipment, I do not recommend you go out wearing a lot of camo, a lot of military looking equipment uh, because you're just flagging the police and you're flagging the military and they're going to say, that guy has a gun. We need to disarm him. And I don't know about you, but in a worst case scenario, I'd rather keep my guns. This is Survival Doc, reminding you, be prepared or be prepared to be pleased. Disaster upon